Alright guys, so in this video we're going to be talking about how do we actually create these flowcharts and we're going to use some existing knowledge here and uh, kind of go by the joke of uh, everything that you have a problem with can be fixed with duct tape or WD-40. And the idea is, you know, if something's moving and it's not supposed to be, grab the duct tape. If something's not moving and it should be, grab a lubricant like WD-40 to help you with the problem. And the big idea here, of course, is to be able to see how we can use the different shapes to go ahead and help us work through this problem. So whether you are that human interpreter of the code and you're following the flowchart based on your answers, or if you're actually programming it, you're able to use this to help visualize the path that the different situations can happen. So to get us started, um, we're going to be hopping into Google Drive where we can go ahead and create a new Google drawing. Okay? And the big thing with this is um, drawings are usually not instantly shown. Okay? It's not one of the main functions. But we go ahead and tell it we're going to create a Google drawing. We can give it a name. In this case, it's going to be the engineering flowchart, duct tape versus WD-40 and we can start building out this program. And the big thing that we're going to need is to start creating the shapes. Okay? The shapes are the, the, the schematics that help us understand what either the computer's thinking or what we're waiting for the user to do or whatever it is that is part of that program's functionality. Now with our shapes, it's going to be very tempting to grab some of the generic shapes Okay, that are up towards the top, or maybe even some of the more uh, animated ones. But the ones that we're going to find most useful is they actually have a section specifically set up for flowcharts. And if we hover over these, okay, we see the different functionalities that are provided. Now, for a program, we know that we need to have a start stop you know, terminal. So we grab the terminator. We click and drag to give it the shape that we want. And one of the cool things about doing these as software is it's very easy for us to go ahead and type in that information. So we know that this is going to be the start command and from there we're saying this program has started operating. We of course can click and drag, we can move it where we need it to be, we can do a little bit of text formatting and from here we go ahead and start deciding what that program's doing. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and have a displayed question, you know, what we would have on the computer screen, and we can ask that core question, you know, does it move? What is the current condition of that object? Okay. And after showing that question, we know that the user is going to be asking a question or answering a question and when we answer a question we know that the computer needs to go ahead and store that data okay? so using the data shape we can identify that information this is usually where you can think about what's the variable name or the type of information that's going in here so I'm going to simply have this as answer one okay? because we're actually going to have a second question later on. And we can then use that data to answer the question. So we've displayed the question. We've told the user, here's what you need to do. They give us an answer. And then we know that the computer is going to need to make a decision. Okay? So decision under shapes is literally the decision command. This is our if else statement. Same process, click and drag. we can basically say is the object moving and this is the one where we can go ahead and kind of branch out because here's where the arrows start to come in play and while I do not always add a shape put in an arrow add a shape put in an arrow try and do this periodically so you're not getting lost in your program because these arrows are the tool that we need to go ahead and show the progression in the program. Now a line may help some, 
We probably though would prefer to use an arrow um, and we can use kind of the elbow connectors um, because sometimes we can go ahead and create some lines within these. Um, so we'll see if, yeah, so we can have the end terminal be the arrowhead that we want. So a lot of times I'll just use a regular arrow tool to go ahead and connect it to kind of the, the handles, the, the anchor points on each of the shapes. Um, but if you want to spend some time making it more aesthetically pleasing, you know, play around with the curved connectors or you know the other features that you may choose to explore. Usually, once you've got the uh, the terminal set up, it will go kind of in that um, that standard setting, okay? Just like any other formatting that you may do in a uh, Word document or a Google drawing. But it's something to kind of consider and be mindful of. Okay, you're not going to be able, um, at least not unless you're intending, to have it go back and go back to that kind of initial, you know, step. So just be mindful of kind of how you're connecting those. So now that we've got the computer to ask that question, is that object moving? We need to ask the second question. Is it supposed to move? So the cool thing is we can copy and paste these shapes. Okay? So I can select the does it move. Copy it. Paste it. And of course, hotkeys um, certainly can uh, work in our favor. <coughs> and we progress on to, you know, ask should it move okay. and again the, the same things can be happening you know we've got the first answer we can ask the second okay. um, put the second variable in okay. so it's allowing to go ahead and progress through now one of the things that you're probably noticing is the space for this is quickly disappearing you can actually see the the core shape here but when you click on the document itself we can reshape it give ourselves some more space as needed and then zoom back in to continue with our planning okay. so um, I of course forgot that after we kind of have that decision okay this is the first branch we know whether it should be moving or it should not okay. So even though we've created those, okay, we can select both of those blocks or even have that first arrow in place for it. Select them, copy, paste, okay. and this is kind of the first branch based on that decision statement. Okay. So if we have it as yes it is moving okay we often need to go ahead and put the text in for that line so getting that added in again copy and paste to go ahead and make the arrow on the other side as the no And again, this is, I've already thought through the process and maybe I've sketched out some of my own ideas. In this case, we know that I've already created. But we're able to go ahead and make these progressions fairly quickly, fairly easily within the software to help us express our ideas. Now with the second idea, you know, we're expanding on it, you know. Having asked, should it move? We need to go ahead and say, that set up kind of that second decision and then we can start kind of addressing what happens now that we kind of have it to the point where we're getting the information we want. And having branched out these ideas, 
Okay, and this is something that we'll see when we get more into kind of program development. It is going to be possible to have these converged ideas get back together. Okay? So in this case, we know that if it's supposed to move, um, sorry, so if the object is moving and it's not supposed to move, we know that we'll add WD40. And if it's not supposed to move, okay, let's see. We'll say that there's no problem. Okay? And the same ideas can expand for the movements and not movements. Okay? So duct tape if we need to stop it from moving. And of course, the, the no problem if it is. Okay. Now, copying and pasting is a good way of going ahead and quickly getting shapes in place. But in this case, let's say that using the WD-40 or using the duct tape are not actually things to display, but in this case, actions that we want the program to actually conduct. Now, the final shape that we haven't touched yet is the process symbol. Now, we could go back, redraw it. Okay? The process is the basic rectangle. But when we make these mistakes, one of the cool things about the software side of things is we can right click on a symbol, change the shape, and correct it to what we want. So we took a display, we've changed the shape, we've now been able to turn it into a process. And here's where those ideas can go ahead and start kind of converging together. Okay. Going back to our arrows. Okay. Let's see. Make sure I'm selected on the right thing. So we can piece these together. But after that WD40 has been used, okay, we could assume that the problem's solved. Okay. Or we could even say that we need to go back, you know, draw a connection going all the way back to, you know, should it move. Okay? But in this case, we're going to assume that all is good. We've solved the problem that we've got. And we can. Sorry, not sure why it's not that I need to draw right now. But we're able to go back to that no problem case. Okay? We can fill out the same things on the right side. And we're getting closer to the, uh, the final step. But of course, we know that just like we have that start terminal at the beginning, we need that stop terminal down at the bottom. So once we've gotten to that no problem stage, okay, this is where the program is basically looping back to its original state. Okay. So again, using a model, giving you the quick introduction to how to create these flowcharts in uh, Google Drawings, I will admit it's not my personal favorite uh, tool. Um, I've used Omnigraffle and Visio and some others, and, and I think they're visually a bit better and they've got some better keys for it. But um, in terms of you know easy access, Google Drawings certainly is more than capable enough to draw out some of the flowcharts that we may be creating as part of our planning processes or as part of our understanding of how to read some of this technical data. Because when we go back and we look at the full picture, okay, we can see how this progresses through. And even though we've left out some of the, uh, the text, <laughs> again, easy thing to uh, forget about uh, putting back in place. So. So, so in this case, is moving, should be moving. 
not moving. Wow, I've I've managed to mix up some of my own logic. Um, so again, think about the different cases with that uh, that duct tape, and we know that we want to stop things from moving. If the object's moving and it shouldn't be. We've actually got our sides kind of uh, reversed. Okay, so what we can do, of course, switch our symbols around, and this should be uh, fitting our logic a little bit better. So, again, this was a kind of rushed example um, to go ahead and show you more of the tools um, for something a little bit more complex. But hopefully, you're finding this fun. Hopefully, you're finding this a little entertaining, and um, hopefully, you're getting that understanding of how software is certainly a lot better than drawing it out just pencil and paper. So consider the tools that are available um, anytime that you're trying to solve a problem. And um, if you have questions, leave them in the, uh, the comments, send me a message, um, of course, or you can ask me in class. So until then, um, take care and uh, be mindful of the tools you use. Um, as we've talked about with programming, you know, you got to think your th uh, way through it. Don't rush it. Anytime you rush something, you make these mistakes, uh, but software, of course, can make it a little easier to correct those uh, mistakes.